Hi, book to you. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about my most disappointing books of this year. Today, we are in my uni house instead of uh, at home with my fiance, so it may be a little bit messy in the background apologize for that uh this is my first video since i have had my hair done and i've had my nails done and i've got christmas nails and they don't focus because my camera doesn't like to focus they're nice anyway i'm feeling very witchy i'm feeling very femme today um i have been inspired by booktube drama Every day on book Twitter, there is something different going on. There is something that someone's complaining about. There's someone trying to police someone else for what they want to do. And most recently, it's been um, Gavin. I don't know his surname, but it's the Gav Gav, I think, on Twitter. Uh, he... Hello? Anyway. He posted his most disappointing books of the year um, video, which is a very usual video for BookTube. I would know, I've been on BookTube for years, like watching, obviously I've only started this year, but been watching BookTube videos for years. Everybody knows that this is a staple at Christmas time or, you know, just after Christmas time to have your worst books of the year. Inspired by Gavin to do this right now today. I was going to do it anyway, um, but pff, here we go. Let's just get on with it. Now... I have had a very good reading year in terms of uh, star ratings. So I have rated a lot of my books four or five stars this year. So what we're going to do is we are going to go from, because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, there's only seven books on this list. We're going to go from 3.5 and below because there's so few that I was not liking or like not as vibing as well with. So we're gonna go from best to worst of the worst. So I have two books on here that are rated 3.5 stars and they both have the word angel in the title. Don't know if that's significant. Is that significant to Christmas? Maybe, it's not relevant. Anyway, the first of these is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Now this series or this trilogy in particular has been hyped so, so, so much on BookTube that I was like disappointed. And I think I was only disappointed because of the hype, because people were on about angst, people were on about, you know, the love triangle. I think maybe I should, I, I'm going to eventually read the other two, but because this one, I was a bit like, oh, it's okay. I haven't wanted to read the other two. I haven't been inspired to read the other two. I've had the second one on a, TV, a couple of TBRs throughout the year and I just never got around to it because it's just not, like, it's not exciting me. It's not me like wanting to pick it up. So uh, yeah, Clockwork Angel, not the best for me. I thought it was okay. Um, Shadowhunters to me is like almost on the same level as like Sarah J Maas, fairy, Akatar stuff. Like as in it's it's trash and we know it's trash, but like you love it anyway. Like almost, I feel that way about romance. And I, when I say trash, I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean that as in it's easy to read. It's very consumable. And you know, it doesn't really make you think about like deep shit it's just it's a fun romp uh you enjoy it at the time i wouldn't you know wouldn't win any awards but you know you have a fun time with it and you enjoy it so that's how i felt about clockwork angel tessa the main character i didn't feel like she had much personality i felt like like i i liked her okay she reminded me of when like i was a teenager and i hadn't really picked anything to be my personality yet. <laughs> and Will, who everyone like simps over on Twitter, everyone fucking loves Will. Uh, I thought he was just being a dick. Like I legit just thought he was being a dickhead. And that, again, that may be because I um, have only read the first book and most people who like the series have have read the trilogy. I don't like, I don't know if people remember back to when they'd just read the first book, how they felt about the characters, but Will, I was just like, he's being a dick for no reason. And I feel like there is a reason because it's very much hinted at that there's a reason why he is this way, but nothing is really explained in the first book why. I'm assuming they're just keeping it for plot later on in the other two books. But in the first book, I was just like, I can't see a reason that I would find acceptable for him to just be this much of a dickhead to Tessa. Jem is uh, a star and I love him. 
that's all I have to say about him. He's great. He's fabulous. Uh, he is gorgeous. I want him to be in my life. I want him to do well. I care about him. I don't particularly care about anyone else. But yeah, I ended up giving Clockwork Angel 3.5 stars because it was slightly disappointing. It was still fun, like a fun little mystery, but I'm still not too keen on carrying on. I think I might if I'm feeling that type of way at some point next year, but yeah, I might not carry on. Uh, the other 3.5 star was Angel Mage by Garth Nix. And I was disappointed by this because um, if you've been watching me or if you know me, you know that Sabriel by Garth Nix is my favorite book of all time. It's brilliant. It's just one of the best things I've ever read. And I loved it when I was younger as well. But Angel Mage was a new standalone fantasy that he brought out. It came out last year and it was in a Lumacrate actually. I think it might have been a Lumacrate May box possibly. But it's a retelling of The Three Musketeers, but with like fantasy and like angel magic. And my favourite part of the book was the angel magic and the villain. But the main characters, like I couldn't tell you their names. I know the, the villain's called Lilith. See, I remember that because she's great. Um, I actually was rooting for her because I didn't give a shit about the main characters. Um, I still re like the 3.5 is because I loved the magic system and the world so much. I wish, wish, wish it had just been a different story and a different just way of doing things. I wish he'd done something different with that world rather than this story because I didn't enjoy this story that much. I don't know, I liked the different perspectives. I liked the multiple perspectives and I liked seeing the villain's perspective. And I, I just, the most, my favorite part of it was seeing people do angel magic. I just thought it was so cool. Next we have the three star books. Um, and the first one of these is Fable. Now that I got an arc of this um, and it was in the September fairy loot. I think it's Fairy Loot Box, um, which I skipped that box because I knew the book that was going to be in it. Um, and I already read the arc and I didn't enjoy it. Well, obviously I've given it three stars, it's fine. Um, but it, this was a really, really hyped book for some reason. Like everyone's talking about it and, you know, was really excited about it. But essentially like it was just, it felt like the whole book was just like one episode or two episodes of, of a series, if that makes sense. Like, so little happened that I was just a bit like, I'm not sure what, why, where this is going. And also the September fairy loot um, had the theme of like mermaids. So I thought there was gonna be mermaids in it. There are no mermaids in this book. There are absolutely no mermaids in this book. They don't exist in this world or they may have in a sequel, I don't fucking know, but there were no mermaids in this book. No mention of mermaids in this book. Um, the main character can swim. She can swim down far and get shiny rocks that she sells. I think like gemstones, I don't know. And this was also marketed as like a pirate book as well. There's not that much pirating <laughs> in the book uh, either. <laughs> so, it's just the story of this girl getting off this island and then sh she has daddy issues and then she kisses a guy that she's just met and then they find some treasure. That's basically it. Like that is the book. Similar to kind of like Cassandra Clare books and stuff like that, it was fun and it was very, very quick to read. And sometimes you just need that kind of book. Like sometimes you don't want to read a heavy fantasy with like, you know, lots of political machinations going on. Sometimes you just want to read a little light fantasy, you know, set on the seven seas and, you know, just having a good time. And I feel like that book is very much that vibe. So the reason I gave it three and not less, I feel like I'm talking down on it more than my rating, like, my rate what I'm saying isn't really matching to my rating but I gave it a three because three to me is like it's okay and I'd recommend it to other people like if I think they'd like it I wouldn't say that I don't recommend it to anyone I would definitely recommend it for like a light fun read uh, next is Senlin Ascends uh, I'm not remembering authors the the, the cover will be there with the author title uh, author name on Senlin Ascends 
Uh, it's one of those books that you look at in like a bookshop and you're like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Um, and then you read it and you're like, oh, I see why I haven't heard of this book really. The Sendliness Ends is about a guy who goes to a tower, which is like, um, I guess it's like a tourist attraction tower and there's millions and millions of floors and it, like a different thing happens on each floor and he goes with his wife and his wife goes missing and then there's like this weird I feel like there's an there's a there's an implication that women aren't respected in this place women are always taken and there's an implication like it's for prostitution that's the vibe I got anyway I don't actually know because I haven't read any of the sequels and by the end, he still hasn't found his wife, but he's, like, becoming, like, this weird warlord or, like, person dealing drugs or, like, like he, he just gets really, really involved with the tower and, like, the workings and goings on of the tower. And he's still trying to find his wife. And uh, the mystery of, of finding his wife, unfortunately, didn't bring it up for me it, it, it propped up a lot of what of why i continued reading it and then by the end he still hadn't found her and had only a like the tiniest little sliver of like a string to find her so i didn't want to continue on the series and yeah just weird things happen on each floor and there's just like i just feel icky about it because there's like there's just something about like the way women are treated in the book that I'm just feeling a bit icky about. And the three star is similar to like what I said about Fable. So I know as a particular type of person that would like this book. Um, that may be, you know, white men, <laughs> but uh, we won't talk about that. But you, you guys know what I mean. Like, you know what I mean? The kind of person who would like this book. Like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's bad. I say it's, like, fairly well written. Uh, I quite liked the guy, the main character. Like, I felt for him and I felt bad for him. And I liked um, the sort of people that he met and the people that he became friends with and helped him out on the way. Like, I really enjoyed that. I think it's just the, uh, un uh, the underlying plot just didn't quite do it for me. My next book, uh, which... Is, it's not quite a three. I put a 2.75 slash three. I don't like to do quarters, but I didn't want to give this a 2.5, but I didn't quite want to give it a three. And I very, very rarely do this, but I wanted to give this a 2.75. And that is We Hunt the Flame. Now, this should have been, like on paper, this is my type of book. Like on paper, if I read this, um synopsis and you know like the what the author has talked about when it before it came out what she talked about and i've seen a lot of people say similar stuff that the plot it, it it's hard to say like it just didn't do it like it didn't execute what it said it would kind of thing the enemies to lovers was so quick like it didn't really give time for some angst, like there was a little bit of angst, just like, like a tiny bit of angst and I enjoyed that, but there was just not enough time for them to know each other, to then be like sacrificing themselves for each other and, you know, declaring love or whatever. But I liked the angst of the guy character. I have read this a while ago now, um, probably in like January or something. Forgive me if I don't know the names of the characters. The guy character is very angsty, reminds me of Elias from An Ember in the Ashes. I've just read that, so it reminds me of that. Like he reminds me of that. He's very tortured, you know, he's he's an assassin for the bad guys, like the emperor. He's the emperor's son and he's an assassin for him. Um, but he hates it and he hates himself and it's, oh, it's all very broody and angsty and that's great. The main character, I want to say it's like Safia or something like that. Um, but she, like she was okay. But um, this is very minor spoiler for the book. So skip the next sort of um, section to the next book if you don't want to have any spoilers. But the, her best friend like dies very early into the book and he's like in love with her and she doesn't love him back. So throughout the beginning of the book, I've spent my whole time being annoyed at this man or this boy for like constantly coming on to her when they're just best mates and she's like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, so he just dies. Uh, and I feel like I was sat there and I was like, am I meant to care? Like, is this meant, like, 
I, I could tell it was written to be very heartfelt, like it, or attempting to be quite heartfelt and like sad. And I was just reading it like, I don't care about this man. I don't care about this boy. Like who, who even is he? He's just a dude. Like I don't care. But yeah, unfortunately this book just really missed the mark for me. I didn't really get the villain um, motives and I didn't really get the love triangle, not love triangle, like the love that I wanted. I got a really queer vibe between two characters. And then I think it turned out they were brothers. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause I got a very like queer vibe from them. And then they were bros and I was like, oh, right, cool. <laughs> Maybe I've like re completely read that wrong, but <laughs> Christ. Yeah, unfortunately I won't be reading the sequel, We Free the Stars. But again, it's like one of those ones that I feel like some people might enjoy, but the ultimately like the plot and the execution was just not, well, not quite there for me. We are on to the bottom two books of my whole year. So the penultimate book that was my worst book of the year was A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Is anybody surprised? Is anybody really surprised? I, I'm guaranteeing you that this is gonna be on every, anyone who's read this book this year on booktube, this is gonna be on the list of their most disappointing or slash worst books of the year. Why was this book written? Like just why? Why did we have this? And we didn't get Haymitch. We didn't get Mags. We didn't get you know, fucking anybody else. Nobody cares about snow. Nobody. And the annoying thing is the idea of having a villain's perspective is very interesting. And at first I was very much defending, you know, it's actually quite an interesting take. Like hopefully it's executed well, it'll be really cool to see. And I, what I will say for the book is that it didn't try to make us feel sorry for him. That's not the impression that I got from the book anyway. I feel like some people thought that it was us trying, like it was Suzanne trying to get us to um, sympathize with a genocidal maniac, but it wasn't, it absolutely was not that vibe at all. I, what I got from it was he himself felt sorry for himself and you could see him thinking he's a good person thinking that he's doing the right thing and then in the next sentence in his head you know like thinking oh it smells like poverty here or like something like that along those lines now that i found really interesting i really liked seeing his perspective of the games the 10th annual hunger games brilliant loved it loved seeing the ideas you know the the start of the ideas that you see later on you know the care packages and things that was fucking cool. I loved that. What I didn't like was the whole half of the book after the games ended. And also uh, the whole romance between Snow and whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, it was gross. I hated it. He is gross. She is stupid for liking him. And believing him like I thought at some point maybe she's like playing the long game like maybe she is finessing this man and then I was totally on board but then by the end I was like she is not finessing this man she is just she did fall in love with him and then by the end she realized he was a dick uh, and that's the end the ending was awful it happened so quickly like the, the whole climax happened in like two pages at the end two pages and i was just there like is this fucking it like is that that's your climax that's what you're going with okay cool <sighs> but yeah shit 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 book i'm so oh, i was just so mad once i finished it i finished it quite quickly um the first half again i don't even think it was the first half it was in the first like third uh where the games were going on and he was bringing her food and he was like becoming good friends with her and i liked seeing him like feel this ownership over her because he's her like mentor 
And I liked seeing that side of him and like seeing that develop, but I didn't expect it to develop into romance. And it shouldn't have developed into romance because it was awful. I hated every second of it. When they kissed, I wanted to spew. I want. I put the book down because I was just like, I just don't want to read that. That's shit. Don't like it. Straight up wrong, should not have happened. I would not recommend you read this book. It's below three stars. I gave it 2.5 and that was for the nostalgia. Uh, the interesting take uh, of Snow's point of view in the first third of the book and the games, like just seeing the games and the setup of the games and the setup of the capital, like straight after the war, uh, only 10 years after the war, it was cool to see that and how they recovered from the war as well. And now we come to my worst book of 2020, but it is The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence. Now, the Red Sister trilogy or the Book of the Ancestor trilogy, which is Red Sister, Grey Sister, Holy Sister, is one of my favourite fantasy series of all time. Of all time. It's brilliant and I would recommend it to anyone. Now this book, this book is I think technically a prequel, but I d d don't quote me on that. It's set in the same world. And in this world, Aberth, this planet Aberth, the whole planet is ice except for one strip like by the equator. Now this book is set like on the ice, whereas the Book of the Ancestors trilogy is set in the equator where there's like normal land and civilization. So Yaz, the main character, lives on the ice. She's she's in a tribe. They, you know, it's a very difficult life. There's this weird ritual where when you turn like 16, some dude looks at you and there's like a whole ritual and he'll either push you into a pit or he won't. Uh, that's very much boiling it down to its basics. But Yaz's brother gets pushed in and she jumps after him. And then, you know, chaos ensues from there. I felt like nothing happened in this book. And I also felt like I didn't like the main character because she was just like one track mind, didn't care about anything. Uh, it didn't feel like she had much personality yet there were like four to five men or boys interested in her or in love with her or trying to get her attention or just in general like simping for Yaz. And I could not for the life of me see why these men were so in love with her. I was just like, she does nothing. She absolutely does nothing. And she's just like, I want to find my brother. Which I understand, you know, that's her main driving instinct. That's her main driving character arc. But, uh, oh, like what else is there? There is nothing else. I gave this book 1.5 stars. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. <laughs> the only bit I liked was the demons bit. Um, which is a similar, co there's a, something else that happens with demons and stuff in the other one, um, like demons under your skin and things. That's cool, I love that concept, but that's not a new concept. That's a concept from, that he's already come up with from, that's in the other series. So it's not like something new specific to this book. So I feel like that's still not even good for this book because it's already been done. He's already done it. It's already made a concept, it's not something new. I was so disappointed and that's because his earlier trilogy is one of my favourite trilogies of all time and being set in the same universe, the same planet, I was so excited, I was so hyped, I was ready to like, you know, buy all of the editions, I got the Illumicrate box that it came in, I was just, I was so sad. Um, I listened to it on audio because I would recommend the audiobook of the Book of the Ancestor because it's read by Helen something and she's really, really good, which is why I listened to the audiobook, but it was awful. I just hated every second of it. I was just, I was sat there reading it and I was like, I don't know what, like what what's gonna happen. As in, they're just sat there, they sit there talking for ages and then they go to another place. There's like no action, but there's also no plot. Like I did like, um, the ending 
uh, and I liked that it sort of would lead into another book, obviously, because it's going to be another trilogy. I liked the ending. I just hated the setting of being under the ice. Absolutely hated it. Um, I think that setting really, really restricted him um, to what he could do. And uh, what he did with it, I really, I just really didn't enjoy it. Okay, that is my worst slash most disappointing books of the year. Let me know down below what some of your worst books of the year were. Do you agree with what I'm saying about some of these? Or do you absolutely disagree? Let me know. Should I give some other series a chance? Like, should I give another book a chance? Should I read the next book in Girl and the Stars? I know it's not out yet, but let me know. Um, should I read We Free the Stars, do you think, from We Hunt the Flame? let me know. Also please don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe if you like what you see. I am uploading at least once a week hopefully in the new year as well. I've had a bit of time off for uni but I'm getting back on it and yeah I hope you all have a lovely Merry Christmas. Bye!